I was like, is this an exfoliating acid? This is so confusing. Today's video is all about acids, and that's because I was trying to think of the things that when I first started getting into skincare, I found very confusing, and acids was definitely one of those things. I was completely overwhelmed, completely uninformed, and ended up over exfoliating my skin to disastrous results, as you can see here. That little setback ruined my skin barrier for literally months. So I'm hoping today's video can save you you from any of that. So I'm going to talk about all the different types of acids. I will list some of my favorite products in the description box below for you to review. Just keep in mind, I am 47 years old at the time of filming. I have combination skin that's very sensitive, rosacea prone. I'm also very dehydrated when it comes to my skin. So when you look at the products that I'm using and choosing, keep that in mind. So when I refer to the term acid in skincare, most people think of AHAs or BHAs and they're exfoliating properties. AHAs are alpha hydroxy acids and BHAs are beta hydroxy acids. AHAs are water soluble chemical exfoliants that work to remove dead surface skin cells and debris. Whereas BHAs are oil soluble chemical exfoliants that really go deeper into the sebaceous glands that work to really clean out that oil and junk and dirt and debris from that kind of a level. This is why BHAs are ideal for those of us with oily, acne prone or combination skin like like me. Both AHAs and BHAs loosen the fluid that sort of binds the skin cells to the surface layer of your skin. It loosens that fluid in between and causes the shedding or exfoliation of the skin. And what's fabulous about that is a smoother, brighter skin is revealed underneath. So it's no wonder that acid exfoliation is very important, but it's also loved by people because it's one of the only things that'll really give you instant results. When it comes to skincare, there's not much in a topical application that will give you an instant result, but I find that acid exfoliation can really do that. The most sought after benefits of using acids is that of course it can brighten and smooth the skin, it can help reduce texture, it can help reduce the appearance of pores, it tackles hyperpigmentation because it's turning over skin and revealing newer brighter skin underneath. There's just a whole host of benefits to using an acid exfoliant. When it comes to AHAs, the most common are mandelic acid, lactic acid and glycolic acid. So let's tackle mandelic acid first. It's really nice for those of us with sensitive skin. That is the one product that I actually started using as an exfoliant with great success. It was the glycolic acid that ruined my skin in the picture I showed you before, and that's because it was too strong for my skin and I was using too much of it. Once I figured out what my skin needed, mandelic acid was a great place to start. Mandelic acid is derived from bitter almonds. Of the three AHAs that I mentioned, mandelic acid's action in the skin is much slower. It has a larger molecule size than lactic acid or glycolic acid, which means it penetrates the skin more slowly, which doesn't mean that you're not getting all the benefits you are, but they're coming at a slower pace, which for people who have sensitive skin like me or are highly irritated by skincare products, or if you're just dipping your toes into acid exfoliation, mandelic acid is a fantastic place to start. And I should mention, every skincare product you use doesn't have to be the most highest percentage, the highest strength, the fastest action in the skin, that doesn't work for everyone and it certainly doesn't work for me. For me, slow and steady has won the race. So starting out with slower, less irritating products and if your skin can tolerate and build up a resilience to those products, then gradually you can increase strength and frequency as your skin will tolerate it. But in some cases it never will and if mandelic acid is your go-to acid, it's totally great. The next one, lactic acid, is usually derived from milk but it can also be derived from certain fruits and its molecule size is a little bit smaller than that of mandelic acid so it does work in the skin more quickly to turn over those skin cells but it's also a very hydrating acid. It's considered very gentle and safe especially on sensitive skin I can totally attest to that and lactic acid is really my sweet spot. It's what I typically use when I'm exfoliating. Finally is glycolic acid which is derived from sugarcane. Glycolic acid has the smallest 
molecule size, it works very quickly in the skin. Many people love using glycolic acid. It does everything mandelic and lactic acid does just more quickly. So if you've got resilient skin, you may find it responds very well to glycolic acid. Another AHA you may be familiar with is kojic acid. And kojic acid is derived from fungi or from the fermentation process of making sake, soy sauce, and rice wine. Kojic acid is well known because it targets the melanin production in your skin, which of course is responsible for pigmentation. Products that are formulating with kojic acid are usually targeting hyperpigmentation and melasma because its goal is really to brighten the skin. And an added bonus, it also has antifungal and antibacterial properties. There can be some side effects with kojic acid, so you should really be in contact with a dermatologist or a medical professional. I think the most common one is contact dermatitis. I would love to hear from any of you below if you've had that experience and maybe you could share it so others could learn as well. Now I exfoliate with an AHA once a week. I do it every Sunday. I know Sunday is my exfoliation day so I don't ever forget to do it and I'm able to choose the acid I want to use based on how my skin is doing. BHAs or beta hydroxy acids are different from AHAs because they're actually separated by a single carbon atom and that is the extent of my chemistry explanation. The most common form of BHA in skincare is salicylic acid and it's derived from willow bark. Salicylic acid is really effective for oily, combination, or acne prone skin, and that's because it can really get into that pore and exfoliate the oil out of the pore, and really that oil that's surrounding the hair follicle in your sebaceous gland, which when left to its own devices with the dirt and debris, makeup, and all the other stuff that gets clogged in our pores, can lead to acne breakouts. So salicylic acid is great as a treatment because it will treat existing acne by making sure the pores are really clear, but it also has a preventative action in the skin by keeping your oil production at bay, by cleansing out those pores regularly so that acne inflammation never occurs in the first place. I use it once a week religiously, but if I notice that I'm starting to get a bit of congestion and starting to break out, I will use it again. So that one I'm kind of more really in tune with my skin about when I need it because I want to make sure I'm preventing any acne inflammation and flare-ups. Also, I don't want to overuse it in my skin because I'm quite sensitive. Salicylic acid comes in many forms. You can find it in cleansers, toners, serums. So you can really use the product that works best for you. For those with really oily, acne prone skin, using a salicylic acid cleanser every day might be exactly what you need. Next is one of my favorite acids. If I could wrap my arms around this ingredient and just tell it how much I love it, I would. I'm talking about azelaic acid. It has a really special place in my heart and in my skincare routine because I do really attribute the success of my rosacea to azelaic acid. Azelaic acid is neither an AHA or BHA, but rather a dicarboxylic acid. And it's derived from grains like wheat and barley and rye. Azelaic acid is very lightly exfoliating, but its real main goal is to be skin calming and soothing. It lightens dark spots and hyperpigmentation and can help to even out skin tone and texture. It helps with rosacea because of its anti inflammatory properties, which also make it great for acne prone skin as well. Many dermatologists use it in prescription strength to treat rosacea, but you can find great products under the 10% mark over the counter. And for me, that strength has been very effective on my skin. Just a gentle reminder, because any AHA or BHA that's gently exfoliating or even more harshly exfoliating your skin, because it's revealing newer skin underneath, it's actually more photosensitive. So you should always be wearing sunscreen as the last step in your morning skincare routine, but most definitely when you're using acids, your skin will be more prone to burning. But we all know that daily sunscreen is a must, right? Right? Finally, let's talk about two non-exfoliating acids. Tranexamic acid is a non-exfoliating acid. However, its anti-inflammatory properties target melanin production and hyperpigmentation in the skin. That really differs from the AHAs and BHAs that we're talking about that are exfoliating the skin to reveal newer skin, which in turn also helps hyperpigmentation. This is actually going right into those melanin production sites and working at that level. 
level. That is why I love tranexamic acid. I am the result of the era of never wearing sunscreen, sunbathing with baby oil, and being out in the sun all day long. So I have a lot of hyperpigmentation on my skin. So that's been really a focus for me with tranexamic acid, is using it to target some of this hyperpigmentation in combination with other acids and retinoid use. Tranexamic acid's efficacy has been so good, it's actually compared often to hydroquinone. Hydroquinone is a skin lightening agent that's actually used to bleach the skin, really targets like freckles and hyperpigmentation and melasma, but it does have some side effects. That's where tranexamic sort of wins the battle against hydroquinone. There are a lot less side effects. I love using tranexamic acid topically in a skincare routine. I should say tranexamic acid orally is something altogether different and is used to help bleeding disorders. I'm talking only about topically applied serums and creams. But I love tranexamic acid in my skincare routine because it also helps to calm and soothe my rosacea while targeting that hyperpigmentation at the same time and it also really works to maintain my skin barrier which I prioritize over almost anything else. Another non-exfoliating acid is hyaluronic acid. Just because acids in the name doesn't mean that it exfoliates, kind of like amino acids. Hyaluronic acid is a humectant which means it can draw moisture to the surface layer of the skin and when it does that it plumps the look of your skin which in turn can smooth out the look of your fine lines and wrinkles. Hyaluronic acid is found in standalone serums, in cleansers, in moisturizers. I think it's in every single thing that has the word skincare on it. So you may not always need a standalone serum. For me, I love using a standalone hyaluronic acid serum. Where I live in Canada, we have very humid summers. And due to that, the hyaluronic acid just seems to also work to pull the moisture from the air into my skin. It just is very synergistic in the summer months. In the winter, I don't find I need it as a standalone serum. There's not much moisture in the air. It's not doing double duty over time to really plump and hydrate my skin. So I focus less on standalone hyaluronic acid serums in the winter and really prioritize them in the summer. But that's just me. If you live in a very arid climate and you're using hyaluronic acid and not finding it giving you all the great benefit that people like me are saying, oh my gosh, it's amazing, look at my skin in the summer. That could be why. Definitely always apply hyaluronic acid to damp skin, so it should be applied either immediately after cleansing when your face is wet, or if it's in another section of your routine, just mist your face with water or a serum or a face mist, and then apply your hyaluronic acid to get the best results. With the exfoliating acids, you do have to be careful about using an exfoliating acid with other high strength ingredients in the same routine. If your skin is very resilient, then it could be possible that you could do that without irritation. For me, when I'm using an exfoliating acid, for example, on Sunday when I do my lactic acid routine, I keep my routine very simple. I cleanse, use lactic acid, and moisturize and a face oil. And that's it. One of the other things I learned when I started getting into skincare is that I had a little bit of that, you know, shiny penny analogy, like something shining over here and saying, oh, it's going to hydrate my skin. I need that. Oh, I have wrinkles. This is anti-aging. I need that. Oh, exfoliation gives you bright and glowy skin. I need that. Retinoids, acids, vitamin C's. It was like a kid in a candy store. Get it on my face. Don't do that. Start slow and implement these things one at a time. And I guess my number one tip, if you could learn from my mistakes, is to prioritize your skin barrier. Because if your skin barrier is compromised, you have to scale back everything and just focus on fixing that. And a damaged skin barrier means that you can't use acid exfoliation while your skin barrier is damaged. You have to heal it first. So far better to be preventative than have to treat after the fact. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this trip through acids. Okay, not that kind of channel. That's not what I meant. Thanks for watching. Drop your comments about acids below and I hope you have a fabulous day.